Well, long considered one of the best classic rock bands of all time with 120 million sales, 100 singles and 43 albums to their credit, Status Quo are getting ready to rock Australia one more time. While it's been four years since the band was last here, what we're about to see is a very, very different show. The last night of the Electrics tour promises to be a full throttle, thunderous electric set that no fan or future fan will want to miss. I'm very excited now to have founder and frontman Francis Rossi with me on the phone. Hello to you, Francis. Hello there. You got me excited now. I think I'll go. <laughs> I want a ticket. I think I'm going along. <laughs> Excellent. I'm marvelous. sure you're going to enjoy it for sure. Hey, you've been rocking it since 1962. Um, in those days, yeah. you were called the Scorpions, but that's 55 years ago. You couldn't have possibly You're thought You're enjoying saying that, you... that, aren't you? You're enjoying <laughs> totally saying that. Just rub it in. <laughs> I can only <laughs> say it because I'm of the same vintage. Um, but you That's couldn't, have, you couldn't have thought... <laughs> you couldn't have thought that you'd still be going so strong today then, could you? No, I don't think... Uh, at that point, we never thought we'd do it at all. And I was just saying to somebody else that it seems that everybody today talks about their children and they say, You're so good, darling. You're so good, darling. And Darling sits there waiting to be discovered, whereas our generation were always told, well, it's never going to work, particularly if you're in quota, you haven't got any chance at all. And it made us dig in somewhat. But yeah. to think it would last, and once we'd had success, the tricky thing is hanging on to it. And then 10 years, they celebrated the first 10 years, you think, well, it must be nearly done. But we forget that everything was kind of growing up in this industry. And it has become an industry, and it's become very serious guy just now says something about roadies they aren't roadies anymore roadies at the time just could just lift things and the guys today are all technicians so it, as i said it's become very very serious very important and very budget driven <laughs> and not quite as much fun as we used to have i'm sure do you still um, feel some that, do you still feel that deep-seated drive to prove yourself or have you gotten over it Strangely enough, it's more about proving us since six, uh, since Rick died. That while Rick was ill and stepped out of the band, and we were doing doing shows, it seemed I suppose we weren't we didn't think it was a permanent thing. Or it, and when Rick died, it was suddenly ah. So we the rest of us had to really focus on the new guy and really concentrate on um, make, on the arrangements and, and how the things were played originally. And it seems at the moment that, that now that we've got something to prove again, which kind of seems ridiculous at this age, but it has given us, it's like a kick in the derriere. And it, 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 perhaps the band have come, become complacent, or perhaps all older bands do, because perhaps there isn't anything to prove. But I feel we have something to prove now. And each night we go on, there's this kind of um, look in each one of us's eyes. You can see where we're looking at each other to see what's going to and that I find really, really exciting. So hopefully that will um, that transpire into something in Australia that people will see that. that we seems to be a renewed um, vitality. That's a nice word. Yes, very nice indeed. I seem to ask all the, the old rockers this same question, though, and, and most of them have the same sort of response in, in terms of how do you manage to keep up that energy? Do you have to have your nana nap in the afternoon? Have you turned vegan? Have you, you know, you go to the gym five times a week? Have you had to... I mean, you must have had to reverse that, that heady lifestyle of those early years. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of that stopped when I was 30, that kind of stuff in, in the early 30s. And as I said, it becomes serious. It's budget-driven. Everything is... You're trying to keep status quo alive. It's like a corner shop. If it doesn't take a certain amount of money, it fails. Um, I've had a trainer for at least the last 25 years, I think. And um, I work out when I'm doing show. Anything to stay fit, because the one thing about the show when you when you're in the midst of the show and we had some shows this summer we did not, not long finished in switzerland and they're usually extremely large crowds in switzerland and you something happens to a person standing in front you must know that yourself that it makes you and so the following morning you, the physical feeling is quite ouch so you know you had a good one <laughs> and that seems to be part of it it becomes it, it as much as i say we may have become complacent there is there is something about walking on again, which you know, you, your, your voice changes as soon as you say, right, let's, work, let's do this. <laughs> and so when I hear people on, uh, on those talent shows saying they're going to give 110% or not, or they're really going to try tonight, every night is special. You walk in front of people, and I've always felt that, that it, you're on, and they're special. There are people watching you. 
are expecting something. So to treat them as it's just not the way. We've always been very professional like that, and I'm kind of proud of that. That they're very, very important every single night. There is no one gig more important than another. It's another thing our, our industry tries to do that certain gigs are more important when they're all important. Yeah, listen, you've been there from the very start. Tell me why you still yes, do it. I mean, with the hits you've had over the years, shouldn't you be comfortably retired by now, playing with your grandkids? Actually, to some of my grandchildren are staying with me at the moment. But um, the other thing, too, people and I think should realise is they seem to you, you make all this money, which obviously we have, but they've read about the, the drug problems, the drink problems, <laughs> Rick had his boats, his houses, his cars, we have divorces, and all sorts of other stuff goes on. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean we're poor. and we, But like anybody else, you think, well, there are bills to pay, I like my lifestyle. But the most thing at the moment is... The insecure little show-off in me needs to go up there and do something. I, I'm not really anybody unless I'm him on there. And uh, and that's the same, I think, for anybody that's in showbiz. You become that yeah. person. And someone said to me the other day, you become institutionalized in this. I mean, yes, I have. I need to be going out there and doing it. I get out of the bus at 9.30 in the morning. I'm in the venue all day. Everything's a routine. I yeah. long for that routine. I love for that uh, strict yeah. routine we have on the road. And there's something about that. I need to do that. As long as I, I think don't it look keeps you young too, doesn't it? <laughs> I, it think does you, I think you're looking pretty good still. You, I mean, well, I think about you your optician. <laughs> ah. I do need new glasses. Um, you, you were also very famous for your look, those tight-waisted flares and the shirts open to your waist. I noticed you've changed that look over the years. How's that gone down with the, with the fan base? Um, we went into black jeans many years ago on the heavy traffic tour, I think. We changed the stage and we were all looking at it one day that we looked a bit odd against the stage, so we went into black denim. Um, but I, I, I kind of like the idea that there's, we wear that, that's it. I don't have to think about what I wear. I've got a white shirt and a waistcoat and black jeans, that's it really. And I don't, I don't envy you the dress. people that think, what am I going to wear tonight? I don't know what to wear. <laughs> but that, I, I, that fashion, doesn't bother me. That fashion circle, sorry, that, that, the fashion circle certainly turns and churns, doesn't it? I see even long hairs back in some circles again. I know, but I'm not going to get there again, am I? <laughs> you could try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I joined a, a monastery for a while, and they shaved that piece out of the back of the head, that tonsure. That's why I've got that bald piece at the back there. It's a religious thing. <laughs> the, I love my um, own jokes. Have you noticed? Yeah, no, no, that's good. We, you, you have a good time. We like that for sure. Um, um, Francis, who comes to your concerts today? Surely they can't be the same fans <laughs> through all those years. Lots of them are. In the hardcore through England and some of Europe, in fact, there's, there are two ladies, one lady that I've seen in the show, she saw us in 1968 in this place. We were doing two nights, and we did a TV in between, and there were three people in the audience each night and a dog. And one of, the, one of these ladies was there, and the last time I spoke to her was probably three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, and she'd done 680 shows at that point. And there are a lot of people that are there, 300 or 400, and there's various people that we have to give them a round of applause because they tell us they've done... Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Maybe I could for the Everly Brothers or Jeff Lynne, perhaps. <laughs> but as people in this side, we are so lucky that people do follow bands that way. Uh, and us, it is so much part of their life, status quo, as our other bands are to other fans. It's, Again, one of those things, if you'd gone back and said this in the 60s or in the middle 70s, it would have been laughable because everyone was told it was going to finish and wouldn't last. And it has. It's confounded everybody somewhat. Uh, it's awesome. Over the years, you've certainly cleared your own path with songs like Whatever You Want and Rocking All Over the World, to name just two. Mm. But they're, mm. they're universally known. They're, they're anthems everywhere. Is that still what you play today? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get bands... I can see perhaps where they're coming from, but not a wise move to actually sign not being in your back catalogue. There used to be, you see reviews from us and a few older bands where um, journalists may say they plundered their back catalogue as though we should have done someone else's. <laughs> we, we, you start out hoping to have X singles, X hit, X albums, and then you play them. We are that band. I quite often get asked what we're going to do. What can I say? So I tell them we get fed up doing quo. We're going to do a Stones catalogue. 
It's just kind of silly. Of course, that's who we are, and that's what I, we do. Rehearsing them. Yeah, I, I hope you do lots of talking to the audience too, because you're quite hysterical. If you if you ever give up playing, I you do like to, to get talk. off stage as a comedian. Bit of a shame, yeah. <laughs> How long are you going to keep doing this for? You've been you've been um, carrying on about Stop, quitting for I've the been, last thirty years. I've been years. retiring for ages. Yeah, I I don't know. As I said to you, we're supposed to end at the end of this uh, electric tour, but. They're talking about shows next summer, and I'm really tempted because I'm really enjoying myself. I didn't expect to. That's the thing that confounds you. I think John Lennon says, you know, life's the thing that goes on while you're making other plans. But I had other plans, and now I'm enjoying this again, and I did not expect to. How good is that, <laughs> Francis Rock? Rossi, keep on rocking it. Australia is loving you. The world is loving status quo. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on stage as a comedian when you can no longer strum that guitar. Thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, man. Thank you very much.